building a virtual ASA firewall. In this example we'll be building an ASA firewall using Windows XP. Don't try and do this with Windows Vista because it won't work. So looking at our virtual machine that I've got here, look at the network cards that are on it. You'll see I've already got two that are dedicated for the firewall. I'm going to add another one in. If this was a physical machine you could obviously plug another NIC into it. But thankfully this being a VM, I can just add them in. So add another network adapter. I want it in bridge mode. seconds all being well. We'll pick up the new Ethernet controller and there it is. You'll notice I've renamed the others so that they follow the normal Cisco interface naming convention. I kind of backslashes in there so I'm just putting dashes in there. So this one will be yeah, Ethernet 0 dash 2. Okay, so you're going to need three pieces of software. The first one is Kimu with ASA in it. The link is on there. WinPCAP and DynaGen. So I've downloaded them already on my machine here. If you open the zip file, it's got the Kimu files in it and extracts all those files to the root of your C drive. Dump them on there. Don't need a single extracted. And there they are. Next, I'm going to install Dynagen. Just follow all the defaults. Click through. There's nothing to change. Let it install in its entirety. Let me drop a few shortcuts on the desktop when it's finished. Install one PCAP. Again, you don't need to change anything except all the faults. Install. Okay, what you're going to need to do now is to bind the interfaces on the machine to the interfaces that the virtual asset is going to use. And to do that, you need to edit the batch file that you've already got in your asset directory. We go back to the ASA directory that we put in there originally and open it up. The one we're looking for is ASA no line A underscore win. Now if you open it up, there's a big ludicrously long command in there that we're going to have to edit. And we're going to have to edit it to put the device IDs in there for the network cards that are in the XP virtual machine. Now the one that you get with it is just a sample, so you'll need to change the IDs in there. Right, there's the first one. You're going to need to substitute that for the device ID of the one that's actually in your machine. Now to find that, if you go back to the desktop, there'll be a shortcut on there called Network Device List. Run that, and after a couple of seconds, It will populate with the interfaces and with their device IDs. Interface 00, 01 and 02. Okay, so I'm going to copy 00. And I'm going to paste it 
paste that back into my script. Then I'll scroll along to the next one. And there's the next one there. So we need to delete that device ID and replace it with a 1 for 0 or 1, which is at the bottom. Just as we did before, copy the device ID and paste it back into the script. Now this script only has um, entries for two, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the last one in its entirety because I'm going to have three interfaces. I'm going to paste it back onto the end. Shift in the backspace. Okay, take the final one. G02. Oh, XP is conspired to SB about. Because you've copy and pasted, there are three other things that you're going to need to change. Firstly, is the MAC address. So you can have two interfaces with the same MAC address, and you've just copy and pasted it. So, let's just change that to one eight. And lastly, you need to change the VLAN number, but you need to change it in two places. The last one was VLAN one, so this one will be VLAN two. And last but not least. So look at the end of the uh, command now you'll just see why it says telnet1234 that will become apparent what that is in there save that ok now to launch the asset we need to run the bash file that we've just edited that's it up and running to talk to it we need to open a command window tell it to the local host on the port that I showed you earlier which was 1234 hit return a couple of times ok you need to type in the following mod probe A100 and hit return then if config space eth0 up and the same again for ethernet1 same again for ethernet2 then for cd space forward slash mnt space forward disk zero dot slash line a underscore monitor and hit return and hopefully if I've done everything correctly after a couple of seconds we should be looking at a Cisco asset prompt jump up to enable mode it's default so the password will be blank. Okay, at the minute this is using 192.168.0.96. So we need to change the IP address. Go to configure terminal mode. Yes. 
give it a new pin IP address 172.16.254.199 with a 24 bit mask. And just as if it's a real firewall, I can have a pregnant pause while it thinks about it. Now, what we're going to need to do is assign an IP address to the interface on the parent machine. Okay, remember we're dealing with Ethernet 00. zero. One send two. 16.254.198 you notice I'm not using the same IP because I thought I was at the conflict and then XP will have a think about it to do is allow Telnet from all inside I'm just going to set the Telnet password to password well let's test it to make sure we can talk to everything Okay, so we can ping the outside interface of the ASA. We can ping the network interface card in the XP machine. Just clear that out of the way. And we'll allow Telnet from anywhere inside. So, oops, what was the limit? My apologies. Uh, one, seven, two, two, six, ten. Remember we set the password to password. Be blank. And there we have a working as a firewall. The only thing that you're going to need to remember is uh, to save. You don't use a write mem or a copy run start, you have to use the copy statement that's on the screen there. Thanks very much.